Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to the Fine Arts Building. My name is Blair Thomas. I'm the director of the Chicago International Puppet Theater Festival, and we're here for the final of our artist panel discussions, uh, led by my colleague, Paulette Richards. Um, it's been a fantastic uh, journey, uh, getting to the last day here, uh, 11 days of work. Uh, we were in 26 different venues, over 100 different events, uh, almost, almost 12,000 people uh, attended events, so it has been going very well. We're very happy. Uh, I said 12,000. <laughs> <Right. laughs> uh, so, uh, but this morning we have a, a, a chance to talk about materiality and puppetry, and I'm going to turn it over to Paulette. Okay, good morning. Thank you, Blair. Thank all of you for coming out. We've been having so much fun, and I know that we're kind of at the end of our endurance, but we promise to make it worth your while for having gotten up early on Sunday morning. What I will do is first introduce our panelists, um, and bear with me because I've got bios here, there, and yonder, and I'll be fumbling a bit to pull them up, but I do have them all. And then um, I have one question that I'll pass down the line to get the conversation rolling. And our panelists also have images, and some of them have puppets to share with you. And there will be time at the, in the last half hour, for sure, for questions from the floor. Uh, did I designate anyone to monitor the live stream and see if we have any questions there? No? OK. Well, we'll work it out. Yes, could you do that? Yeah, thank you so much, Tim. So go to HowlRound. Do you know how to get to HowlRound? And then you can find the live stream on their site. OK, thank you. Last minute arrangements. All right, so without further ado, let me introduce the gentleman to my left, all the way from Kenya, Fidelis Kialo. So, Fidelis Kialo is a puppeteer, director, and producer for television. He is the co-founder of Crystal Puppet Theater Company, and he authored Tears by the River, the show that's been playing all around town. I hope you have had a chance to see it, which has toured not only all around Chicago, but Belgium, Austria, <laughs> Poland, Germany, Indonesia, South Africa, Ecuador, Argentina, Japan, Russia, and the United States. Uh, Fidelis <laughs> has since written, directed, and performed short puppetry video shows, such as Ask Dr. Pomoja, Lockdown in the Village, Giraffe and the Honey Bag, Hair and the Honey Pot, Gone Fishing, Libendi's Backstory, and The Last Wildebeest. He is currently the head puppeteer at the famous Kenya's satirical puppetry TV show, The XYZ Show. Vice President Unima, he's also the Vice President of the Unima Africa Commission. I'm very proud to be an honorary member of that commission. And he's Secretary of Unima Kenya. He's the director of Puppets 254, and a senior member at Kenya Institute of Puppet Theater. We're very glad to have Fidelis Kialo with us today. <laughs> and then we have his colleague, whose uh, bio I'll pull up in just a moment, since they're here, there, and yonder. OK, that's the most recent email I have. Yes, so this is Crispin Mwakidao. Mwakideu. Mwakideu. Wakideo, and he's a puppeteer, a storyteller, an author. Crispin is also the co-founder of the Crystal Puppet Theater. Uh, so let's have a big welcome for him. Okay, now back over to my Google Drive, where I have the bios for the other performers. And unfortunately, I closed that folder when I shouldn't have. <laughs> so here we come. Yes, manipulation. So to my, to uh, Crispin's left, that would be Dagmara. 
And let me find, they sent me like three paragraphs, so I have to distill this. Uh, <coughs> Dagmara Soa, okay, who is the founder of Grupo Grupa Coincidencia, a freelance theater founded in 2009. And her colleague to her left is Powell. Powell, please help me. Komczyk. <laughs> Komczyk. Komczyk. And they are both graduates of the Bialystok Puppet Art Department of the Theater Academy, um, which is where? In Bialystok. It's in a Poland. Warsaw yes. Ac Theater yeah. Academy located, the department located in Bialystok. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. Um, Coincidencia shows have been presented in numerous festivals in Europe, Asia, and North America, and have been honored with many awards, including the Bank of Scotland Herald Angel, Total Theatre Award, Edinburgh, the Grand Prix of the Con Contexki Festival in Poznan, the Grand Prix of the MFTL in Torun, the focus of Coincidencia's interests is contemporary theater of many means of expression with particular emphasis on puppet theater. Coincidencia collaborates on a permanent basis with the German independent scene Lindenfels, mm -hmm. Westflügel in Leipzig, and the Figuren Theater Wild and Vogel, and we had Michael Vogel on the panel. Both the of them. first panel, yes. yes, so we're very glad that they came out to support their colleagues. Thank you so much. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> okay, and then we have um, Federico Restrepo from, here we go, yes. From Local 7, yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, it's torturing me, so. Ah, Federico Restrepo is the co creator, director, choreographer. This is important. It's going to come up in the conversation. Puppet uh, performer, light designer, who was born in Bogota, Colombia. And he founded his company, Local 7, at La Mama in 1986 to expand the use of puppetry in dance theater. With Local 7, he has created over 20 original productions, acting as creator, director, and designer. The undertaking of the ensemble is to deal with themes such as South and Central American culture and history, the immigrant experience, and New York City urban life. I hope you have a chance to see lunch with Sonia, and welcome Federico Restrepo. Okay, I got through that part. So the next part, what we're going to do is go down the line, um, and I'm going to ask this one question, and you all can take your shot at the question, and then we'll evolve the conversation from there. So as I explained last panel, I had intended for the construction techniques panel to be the third one because we knew that Basil Twist was coming and he is the MacArthur genius puppet builder. However, when it went up on the website, I think they thought that there should be a nice alliteration of mechanisms, materials, and manipulation. And so manipulation came third. So what we're gonna do is we promised construction techniques. We are gonna talk about that but we're going to talk about how construction supports manipulation and how manipulation influences construction. Sound good? Yep. Okay, here we go. So the question is, how did your manipulation techniques evolve in negotiation with the materials and mechanisms of the puppet. So you can, you can uh, think about that over different puppets, or you can hone in on just one that we may have an image of if you sent it to me. Do I need to repeat that? Once again, how did your manipulation techniques evolve 
in negotiation. And I'm saying negotiation because anyone who has picked up a puppet knows that I have the intention for the puppet to do this, and that's not always what happens. So how did your manipulation techniques evolve in negotiation with the materials and mechanisms of the puppet? Sometimes to get to this, you have to take the puppet apart. You might have to choose a different material to construct it from. Or you might have to, uh, OK, it doesn't want to turn that way. And so we just will block the show so that it never has to turn that way. <laughs> OK, so that going down the line, I'll start with Fidelis. All right. Um, this I will give an example to one character that we've created. Um, last, last year, we, um, we, we did a show. Um, we created a show that we wanted it to be without words non-verbal and so it was kind of tricky one was um we don't need to make a puppet that has a mouth that was the first thing then the other thing was um how how safe will it be for us to first um use the right material because you're talking about environmental uh, you know conservation and it was kind of tricky because we had to use um something which i'm not proud of we had to use um polystyrene because one, um, the puppet had to have a, a, a rod behind so that it's able to, you know, to control. Um, my idea was to use foam or something else or use uh, paper mache, but again, uh, the time was not <coughs> enough for us to create, um, make puppets, rehearse, and then go and perform the show. And we had to perform the show in, in the, after one month. So we had to do everything within that specific time. So we had to use um, um, uh, polystyrene. And one thing I realized about that puppet is, uh, I think you can scroll, it's, behind, it's the one that I came with. Uh, one thing I realized about that puppet was, uh, one, because it doesn't have to talk, which was good for us. Um, the other thing was um, manipulation, hard to work with the puppet because I had a similar one which was smaller. But now we are, I was creating um, a two meter puppet, which I had now to think about how does that puppet move from the floor to the table and make it um, work from, from, for both, for the table and, and down and, able, uh, and, and have it able to be seen by, by everybody in the audience. So uh, it, I had to start working with it and I saw there's some things the puppet can do, there's some things that, that the puppet cannot do. Actually even walking, I could not walk like you know um, m most people would do with a puppet. So I created a movement for that particular puppet. It had to jump, you know, <laughs> like like uh, how the monkeys jump, but it was a human character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to elaborate on that? Um, I, I just want to add that um, I think some of some of the experiences that we've had or I've had is also that, uh, as you mentioned, sometimes mistakes could actually help you uh, discover things that the puppet can do that you didn't even realize that they, the puppet can do uh, in terms of manipulation, in terms of how they move. And, and one, one other illustration is we, we have a bird in our show and it's made out of um, the material that we use is, is simply, it's a very simple natural material from the coconut which we weave and so it's, it's, the movement is really nice, you know, the, the wings flap very nicely. Um, but how we did it is that we had, a, we, we had a, a fabric on top of it. So you could hold the bat with one hand and then the head and then just flap the wings. But at some point, that fabric came <laughs> out after a certain uh, number of shows. And then Fidelis had to come up with another way of holding the bat, which then he, 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 he holds it now on the tail. And it moves even better than yeah. than than uh, than when he did it uh, on top yeah. with the with the fabric. And of course, then you don't see his hand also much. Yeah. So I think sometimes the more time you spend with the puppet, yeah. mm -hmm. the better you get to know it, and then you can discover more possibilities. Yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you. So just um, we have a whole range of experience with puppetry in the audience. So just to clarify for people, puppeteers use many different kinds of synthetic foam to build puppets, but people may not be as familiar with polystyrene. Mm. I think um, that's the stuff that will be packed in a carton, like <coughs> if you buy a 
a flat screen TV and it's around the edges of the box, so it's usually white yeah. and, and kind of stiff and resistant, but very lightweight. Yeah. yeah. And good for carving. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and easy, easy to carve. Yeah. Easy to carve. Yeah. yeah. So um, that would be the advantage of the material is they had to do it fast so they can carve it quickly that way, and it had to be lightweight. Yeah. Okay, great. So, Dagmara, same question. How did your manipulation techniques evolve in negotiation? with materials and mechanisms of the puppet. Yeah, so in the beginning maybe I will I will say that we are like Grupo Coincidentia, we are uh, we don't build our puppets. Mm -hmm. Well sometimes we sometimes do it, but yes. But in general okay. yes. And uh, we try to find some materials which are uh, which in our mind are good to show what we really want to show on the mm -hmm. on the stage yeah. so sometimes we use not built puppets but the materials like uh, I don't know uh, uh, till dust or okay. plastic foil and you we wanted to uh, try to find how the material can um, work with you and what this kind of material can give you the, the on, on the stage and how you can work with that so uh, in general what I think it's really great to just go um, and look what this kind of uh, 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 thing can give you, mm. and just uh, yeah, for me it's mm -hmm. uh, the, the 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 really great uh, way to find out uh, on the stage. Mm -hmm. So uh, and sometimes uh, the 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 things are giving you the just the. Uh, so can surprise you, yes. and it's really nice to take this all uh, and look that it's just great to have it like that. Mm -hmm. Of course, sometimes these uh, this things are not the same, they changed. Mm -hmm. And it's also so, uh, for me, very important to, um, to take them, to not uh, try to uh, make the things everybody every every time the same mm -hmm. but uh, try to take the the, the the yeah the thing how they are mm -hmm. um, yeah thank you did you want to add Thomas? oh yes <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah because you asked for a kind of a process yeah yes uh, so from the historical point of view, <laughs> uh, I used to negotiate with puppets in a very uh, specific way uh, after uh, I have graduated from the school because we were uh, taught in the school that this is the puppet mm -hmm. and you use it in a very particular way and uh, I'm almost two meters tall, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and I have a screen like that, and I'm not supposed to be visible. <laughs> the puppet should be visible, right? So I needed, so the negotiation between me and puppet <laughs> was, okay, you do your movement there, <laughs> up there, and the puppet says, yeah but you have to go down like this <laughs> in order not to be visible. So that was the negotiation. Now I negotiate in a different way. <laughs> and what Dasha said, we uh, very often use a kind of materials that have their own specific and energy and, uh, and Negotiation with the dust in the um, uh, in the performance of uh, invisible, for example, where we deal with all the invisible things, and uh, and we try to focus on not only on processes but on materials that are not really visible, but we have to do it in a way in a visible 
way. So we work with dust, for example. Mm. So negotiation with dust and this kind of mechanism is totally different. Okay, how about you turn a little bit to the right? Yeah, no way. <laughs> dust would negotiate. Yeah, 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 yeah but don't. <laughs> That's a violence, actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, in a matter of fact, this is a little bit of tricky and metaphorical, but uh, what I really think is that as you if you take the material as it, as it is, then it can lead you to a totally different level. Mm -hmm. so, so that would be my answer to, okay. to your question. Thank you, that's a beautiful answer. All right, ready? Well, you're on the hot spot now. <laughs> if you have the question, you need to hear it again. No, I think I can Great. navigate <laughs> there. Um, well, I'd like to show, uh, Sometimes you make a puppet and then you make a show with the puppet, but sometimes you make the puppet for the show. So i like to show you the first image when I was uh, starting to develop the show Launch with Sonia. <laughs> so if you can, that big picture. You wanna go back to that? Uh, no, no, no. In, uh, in, the, in the one that I just sent you, they have yes. the other pictures. Okay. So basically, the character, uh, Sonia, we see it bigger than life. So I was working uh, with a very big Sonia. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it comes on the screen. <laughs> so in, uh, in that first section of the, of the work, we found, yes, this was the first Sonia. So S Sonia is a big marionette. Uh, when she stands up, it's like 14 feet tall, mm -hmm. something like that. And was very nice, but didn't allow us certain part. When we start to develop the text and, uh, and develop the story, was many things that was very difficult to really get her to, to give to the audience, not to, to really project that type of feelings. But we're still needing to have a very big Sonia. So that made me go in something that I didn't work before to do it in foam. And it's another pictures coming. So I start to, uh, this is another one of that. And then I start to develop to make this puppet in foam, trying to figure out if I can have a two meters tall Sonia, <laughs> that I can move around the space easily with not too many people and still being a person on the stage. So if you move a little bit and you show a little bit until the end of those pictures and appear the, the Sonia So this is Sonia. So that was the way we got to build Sonia and the reason of the materials and the connection with the character. So that was uh, one part of the process. Mm. If you move, I move, I show another character of the show. Oh, this is Sonia. This is still Sonia. So allowed us to dance with her and to move her. Then this is another character of the show that used to be just a sculptor and I was looking to create a character that I can talk and is myself but is there but is not there. So I have this sculptor in the house that I did before and then he say why you don't make a puppet of it? And that was the way I got this sculptor to turn into that little puppet. <coughs> so it's, uh, it's just wire and allowed to be there and not be there because you can see through the material. So that was like the base of that idea. 
Other character important is the birds. There was a dream, so it needs to be something that is very soft and move easy. So those birds are made of paper and they flow and keep that illusion of something that is there, but is still very delicate. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the process building this show and the puppets for this show. I don't know if that works. Mm -hmm. okay, that's great, thank you. And also, if you have not discovered the puppet hub on the fourth floor, there's a cafe there where you can get something to drink and something to nibble on. And there are also three galleries um, exhibiting puppets and paintings and uh, photographs of designs, including Federico's designs for, um, Sonia. for Sonia. So if you want to contemplate those images at your leisure, please go downstairs after this panel and have a look. Okay, thank you. So you two on the end helped us segue into uh, the question of materials because you spoke about, actually you did too. So yeah, it's almost inseparable from the whole topic of the materiality of the puppet. But I wanted to see if you would um, reflect on advantages that specific materials have that you know make you choose them. You all talked about that a little bit with the fisherman puppet, but maybe you can talk. I actually, I want to know about the drum, yeah. the drums that you travel with, uh -huh. the special one. So yeah. if you would talk about that, please. Okay. Um, um, the the choice of um, everything in our show was um, because of so many things. Uh, one was, is it easy to travel with? Is it easy to, to pack it? Um, even some of the puppets, um, if you've seen our show, we, we had uh, zebras which are actually made out, out of a cardboard. And we are also looking at how heavy our luggage would be. <laughs> so uh, that was a good choice because um, they, were, they look very nice visually, but they are just made out of paper. Something you can make with, within five minutes. And the drums that we call the water drums are actually made out of calabash. Um, calabash is quad in another name, whereby you just remove the inside of it, which are seeds and everything. Then it's dried, and then um, you make different sizes to get different sounds. And you just put water and then cover with a smaller quad, and you get sound out of it. And um, actually, <laughs> when we came here, uh, they actually cracked. We don't know why. It's, it's cold. cold. Maybe it's cold. It's, it's a cold. And dry. It has never happened. We had to uh, fix them. We had um, Rowan, the guy who we, we uh, the stage, stage manager that we travel with, uh, is very good with, uh, with the fixing things. So he had to fix them, uh, hoping that we'll be able to finish this tour. So, uh, yeah, and yes. Crispin is on to us. So. Yeah, the thing is that uh, it, it was important for us because we either had to carry two or three drums yeah. or we go with this one, and they are very light. Um, if you take care of them, they are also durable because we've had them for quite a number of years now. And, um, yeah, it's, it's something that anyone can do. Uh, yeah. You just grab them, like you say, get the inside out, dry it, maybe seal it with something that is waterproof, either varnish or, or um, uh, uh, any material that can at least protect the inside because you need to pour water inside of them. So obviously, the more time you, uh, you pour water, then they will begin at some point to wear out. So, But if you seal them properly, then they are good to go for quite um, a number of years. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's why we picked them yeah. for, for our show. Mm -hmm. Actually, they are unique because <laughs> we always, always feel um, uh, happy that everybody likes them, and uh, you know, they, they are they, they are unique in terms of um, the way they are and how they made. Mm -hmm. And the sound. And the sound. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting because when we finish the show, that's one of the first things that people come to. Yeah, what's this? I, I have to 
was the sound actually coming from these from these we'll instruments? Try. And and they want to try them out, and and sometimes they, they don't even want to see the puppets, and you're like, ah, but we need a puppet show. I mean, don't you? <laughs> you want to see the puppets as well? But it's always it, it, it is you part of the the show in a way uh, because they are props, and um, the same way we chose also to, for example, use a stool, a stool which is made of uh, uh, three uh, wooden uh, um, legs but they are also uh, tightened with some screws, so you can actually fold them very nicely, pack them in a suitcase, mm -hmm. and then the top is just made from leather, which has been sewed together, you put it on top, and then it's a stool. Mm -hmm. So all these um, considerations have to come into play when you're thinking of, uh, mm -hmm. of touring. Otherwise, you, you, know, you go to a place mm -hmm. where um, <laughs> they either don't have stools mm -hmm. or the stools don't really match your, 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 your props, mm -hmm. and that might might not bring the, the effect that you desire at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah. So this is your own design. This is yeah. not traditional. It, it, it is. is used. Oh. It is, it, is, it is a traditional yeah. instrument. Yeah. So it's not just our, our design. Yeah. Okay. But we, I think we have probably the, yeah. uh, the only people who travel with them for, yeah. for shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can find people playing them. Yeah. As you can see um, on the picture, um, they kind of look like they're cracking so that that is a, a special glue that uh, we Wrong. had to put inside to protect <coughs> it i think they are kind of also wearing out because of you know water all the time yeah mm -hmm. great yeah that was an excellent example <laughs> okay <laughs> so tagmara and powell a material that had advantages that worked well for your needs? Well, the, the thing is that uh, for each and every uh, production, we are trying to, we will try to figure out what could be the m material or materials that somehow uh, come along with the idea of the, of the show. And, uh, and it's different, so we don't have a kind of a, uh, favorite materials to mm -hmm. just to give an example years ago we uh, made a performance uh, based on the tale of King Gnaf by Stanisław Lem mm -hmm. and the science fiction uh, tale from the from the mortal engines uh, book and uh, it was all about a paranoid king who was afraid of everything, and in a matter of fact, the whole story uh, would <coughs> appear in his brain. And once we got to the point that we can use the materials that would be associated with either water or electricity, uh -huh. that brought us to the point where we thought, okay, mm -hmm. uh, material-wise, it makes sense because the brain works, the human brain works like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a kind of uh, electricity. And uh, the thing was that uh, uh, we already f uh, would find the way how he dies in the very end, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, in like the bathtub, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say hair dryer and the bathtub. <laughs> 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 yeah, so um, and this is a good example mm -hmm. uh, that um, whenever you find a kind of a way through the material to show or tell the story, it gives you a lot of uh, inspiration. Mm -hmm. The, the, other, the, the other example also connected with the, uh, with the show that I have mentioned, Invisible, okay. is that well, how can you deal with uh, invisible puppets or, or stuff? But once you realize that f from a perspective of a modern physics, the things are not really monoliths, mm -hmm. that there is a constant movement within this bottle because there are atoms and the spaces between it they are in the movement mm -hmm. and the, that this is energy uh -huh. inside of that yeah yes 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 no we 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 have an inside joke going yeah. there's there is okay, uh, tim I saw something going on yeah. between you guys yeah there's tim kusak who is one of the authors speaking yesterday and he 
he spoke a bit about um, what I call the metaphysics of yeah. object performance. But this is physics. This yes, is it is. The physics. Yes, <laughs> but when we get beyond, what, the question then is how do we apprehend mm -hmm. these swirling atoms that we think mm -hmm. are the bottle that you have in your hand? Mm -hmm. Is that really something that's outside of your own consciousness? Does it mm -hmm. have a consciousness? When mm -hmm. you're manipulating it as a puppet, mm -hmm. are you engaging with another consciousness or mm -hmm. are you imposing your will on a material form? Mm -hmm. that, that's where we went mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, that was from deep. the perspective of a puppeteer, it's absolutely fascinating mm -hmm. that you're dealing with some energy that you manipulated or in Poland we would say uh, animować, mm -hmm. animating. Mm -hmm. and Anima means soul, mm -hmm. so it's got something to do with yes. this metaphysics. Yes. But from my point of view, it's just, uh, it's just you know, just it's physics. countable, it's mm -hmm. physics, and mm -hmm. <laughs> no magic. <laughs> okay. Good, good. Did you want to add to that, Dagmar? Maybe only the thing that, uh, when we think about the performance in the beginning, you have full, uh, in, I mean, puppets or materials you your head is open and then because we are little independent theater and we uh, travel we in general we travel with our shows mm -hmm. it's that moment that you need to think you you need to a little bit close um, think about the sizes uh, heaviness of the stage and and things uh, which is sometimes not so really nice because we w you would like to do something really huge, like with your puppet in the beginning. It was yeah too big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe only that. Yeah. Actually, always you gotta check because they change the size of the luggage in the aeroplanes. Oh yeah. Uh, yes. So you gotta figure out how to change the size of the puppets in order to travel. Mm -hmm. In <laughs> terms of technique, I, the way I, my hands and my, yeah, or my head to work, because everything was, uh, is, de is designed to dance with, so trying to be very light and be able to um, control it with the body and dancing. I work with uh, stockings, cotton, and I sew to make the shapes, mm -hmm. to be able to have these light puppets that I can dance with. And I use a lot of um, wire, modeling wire, aluminum wire, to create shapes or other puppets that are made just by, mm -hmm. by wire. Mm -hmm. So that's been the materials that I've been working for many years, using it in different ways and mixing them, you know, is mm -hmm. those materials. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Can I yes. add something to, to, to what he was saying? I think one of the key factors, at least for us, is always to, uh, to see how easily accessible these materials are, first and foremost, in our environment, in our, in our community. And obviously it's a question of money. Yeah, you, you, can <laughs> use, <laughs> yeah. you can use the most uh, uh, um, expensive materials if you choose to, but then the question is uh, whether that serves your purpose in your story, because you also, you know, when you're, when you're doing a performance, you also want to, to relate that performance at least within your environment, first and foremost, whether it's uh, uh, a folktale or contemporary, it doesn't really matter. I think the choice uh, of the material that you decide to, to pick is also influenced by the cost, mm -hmm. and then at the at the end of the day, whether it is really serving your purpose. So if I mean Africa, as we know, is endowed with so many resources, mm -hmm. but we can't just say, oh, we want to create a puppet from Coltan, for example, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's beyond our means. Yeah. So we will go for either for sponge or uh, uh, wood or something that we can easily find, and then uh, even if something is broken, you can easily again recreate it and inexpensively mm -hmm. for that matter. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. great. So um, 
Thank you, Federico, because you led us into the next question. I'm kind of going down our checklist mm -hmm. on the, the uh, symposium series itself. Because you're a dancer and you're starting with how does the puppet move and how can we dance with it, that brings me into mechanisms. So if you can think about, the, the way I phrased the question earlier is, what did the puppet need to do and what kind of mechanism did you have to design to enable the puppet to make the movement that it needed to make? Um, OK, um, I also still give an example to one of the characters that we use in the show. Those are the um, elephants. Mm -hmm. um, what we were thinking when we were creating those characters was uh, first, <coughs> um, we can't have them big because that's that's how elephants are they're huge but again we did we need to have them in a way that they are also visible able to be carried and then we said we don't need to make a whole body of an elephant why don't we be the bodies of the elephant and have, have the head so it was even easier for us to move around with the puppets you know so um we, we are having the puppet the elephant and us as puppeteers the body of the pup, uh, of the the elephant whereby we are now able to 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 be able to move around you know easily and we employed the same with some of the characters the zebras um the lions. also the lions so we used ourselves as bodies of the puppets yeah. and and there is also a part of the elephant where we in the story where the elephant had to climb a tree mm -hmm. and as we know that's <coughs> totally yeah, impossible, but in Tokyo, anything can happen. <laughs> so we made it, we made it, we, we, we thought of how we can make this elephant climb a tree. So what we opted for is to have a silhouette, like a flat puppet, and from, it's a two-dimensional, so from, from the audience uh, view, you only see the legs, and then we joined the four legs with a string, and then with a mechanism that you can pull, and then you give the impression that the elephant is climbing the tree. Yeah. So. That was a bit tricky initially, but with time, you know, we, we, we perfected it. Yeah. 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 That particular puppet is a real favorite of mine yeah. because um, I've spent some time studying pantins. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pantin. So if you can see here, yeah. Yeah. a pantin is a string puppet. Um, you pull the string and the arms and legs go like this. Mm. It, it doesn't really do much more than that. Yeah. <laughs> but. Um, these were extremely popular in the 18th century mm -hmm. in France. And so here's a classical harlequin mm -hmm. string puppet. I'd never seen an elephant one to yeah. begin with. Yeah. And also, uh, while they were sort of like um, a high fashion item in 18th century France, mm -hmm. subsequently they just became children's toys. And so this was the first time I had seen one that being used in performance as part of the story. So I was really interested in that mm -hmm. tree climbing elephant. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So your example of a puppet <laughs> mechanism that served a uh, movement purpose. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so as Agnara said, uh, we don't construct puppets very often. But there's one example there <laughs> in our uh, pictures that we have sent. Yes. Uh, if we can find that maybe okay. it would be too random uh, okay. up there. So this is the puppet that we have constructed. Uh, the, mm, so that was the show that would tell the story of um, Puccini working on his very last opera, Turandot, and he was dying on uh, throat cancer uh, during that. And that was based on the, the, <coughs> the opera and on his uh, diaries uh, while he was dying. And, uh, and so in, in, in this show, Puccini was represented by both, by the uh, living character, our friend Mariusz is there, and, uh, uh, and the kind of uh, puppet that was already representing a body that can be uh, alive through the movement or close to death or even even death so the so the idea behind the puppet and the mechanism was that it should be heavy 
uh, it um, to if we deal with gravity, we would operate it either like like this or with this uh, rods that you can see there. Mm -hmm. And there were magnets attached to that, ah. and uh, and like three to four people would be able to adjust the magnets and putting a lot of strength to put mm -hmm. it up mm -hmm. and to operate it. Mm. So in, in that case, again, the, uh, the idea of having somebody close to, uh, to the border, close to death, uh, could be represented by a mechanism and material mm -hmm. that would be suitable for that. Yes. And uh, from a technical point of view, we um, we took uh, uh, a mannequin yes. and we cut that in parts, uh, covered it with a special material, I don't know the name in, uh, in, in English, add some, uh, add some wires and uh, uh, so each part would move in a way separately. Mm -hmm. so, so that was the, mm -hmm. that, that was the thing here. Okay. Yeah. That's a really wonderful example because usually puppeteers are trying to make the puppet as light as possible. It gets very hard to do this for an hour. <laughs> but, but this one's the opposite. Yeah. But this heaviness was really great in this puppet. I had, the, uh, I had a little scene with this puppet, like very close. Mm -hmm. And for me it was really like heavy and it was... It was also uh, because of this heaviness. This puppet was moving. Uh, you need. You don't need to move so much. It's mm -hmm. sometimes it's only uh, you change the balance and the the puppet will make mm -hmm. the movement. So you need to follow the yes. uh, the movement of the puppets and this. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really yeah nice okay. and you never know uh, how wh wh which way this puppet will. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is beautiful. So when um, Hamid was on the panel, the director of Song of the North, I realized that he's actually puppeteering the light because his show is a shadow puppet show and the construction of his puppets is all about how is the light going to come through. Mm -hmm. And so the puppet is actually a way for him to place light where he wants it. Um, and here you all are working with gravity. So puppeteers actually work with materials that we would consider to be intangible, mm -hmm. and yet we find ways to manipulate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yes, okay, <laughs> Federico. <laughs> okay, well, <coughs> if we go back to that puppet, I, that was the first time I carved a foam, and I have the whole body there. So, yeah, the, the, that was the first time. If you put the picture before, I have uh, no the one that is just the whole body on the table. So I finished to carp the body and then try to figure out how I'm going to make it to move and how I cut it and try to keep the foam as the base and not add more things on it. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the next picture, uh, the, the no, the way. one, the, that one. Mm -hmm. So the first problem was how she's gonna see. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to figure out how to make that happen, so I decided to cut it in pieces, the butt, just small cuts, and then Everything is covered with uh, stockings, which is what keep together the mm -hmm. foam after the cut. And that was the way I was making the joints. Mm -hmm. And in the end, that was the same for elbows, mm. knees. And that was the process, just mm -hmm. discovering through building it. Yes. You know? Yes. And I've been downstairs studying this picture <laughs> <laughs> because knees are really hard joints. And I thought yeah. that was an ingenious solution. Mm -hmm. So that worked for some time, but mm -hmm. then after many, many rehearsals, mm -hmm. uh, the, um, on the beginning, she can stand up and was incredible, was easy. But then after moving it and dancing 
for a long time, the knees start to mm -hmm. wiggling. Well, that happens to all dancers, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So in the end, I have to introduce um, a wire that yes. goes between the leg mm -hmm. and connected in the knee to mm -hmm. give more support to the foam because it was getting mm -hmm. impossible yeah. to hold for so long. The cartilage degraded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that's, I don't know, an experience of that. Okay. Thank you. So that, that we're getting to into some really interesting things here in a roundabout way. Um, I, I asked that, I asked that. Um, I'm going to go down the line and see if any of the artists have anything they want to say about the shows or their puppets. Because um, Fidelis and Crispin have to leave in about Five minutes? Because yeah. they, they are doing a show. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Um, so I'll get into your slides. Your maybe, maybe I'll talk a little bit about our show. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something um, that um, we, we've been thinking over and over. Uh, one was um, how do we blend the show in everything that we, we are? One, the culture, being an artist and what we can do as puppeteers. And that's how we came up with um, um, having the show being a storytelling. Second thing was blending it with music, playing instruments. The good thing is um, we're coming from a background where we can all sing, we can all play instruments. Not all, but you know some of them. Um, we are able to, to dance because um, that is at least it, it is in our culture whereby we, we sing, we do everything according to events or anything that happens. So that's how we, we blended the, sh the show and in using our, our experience as puppeteers. Um, and then having different style of puppets. Um, in our show we've combined five styles of puppets. We have a mask, we have um, silhouettes, just uh, uh, a cardboard. Then we have a marionette, and then we have also a um, mouth puppet, and then we have a table puppet, a very small table puppet. So we blended all this so that we can give variety, you know, um, have the show more interesting, um, cover the, the, the places where we, we, we can bring in our culture, you know, singing, you know, um, singing songs that relate to that particular, you know, event or something. So all these songs are also not just songs, but they fit in into that particular scene or you know moment. Yeah, yeah I just want to add that um, it, of course it has if this show has evolved over time, and I think one of the learning uh, uh, curves or, or some of the lessons that we've learned along the way is to push the boundaries, always to push the boundaries uh, and not to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so we, for example, we all know how difficult it is to to uh, um, play with marionettes and make marionettes uh, 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 share feelings or emotions because they usually are, are fun to watch uh, when you have a good uh, uh, marionette player. But it's, it's hard when they have to share emotions, yeah, mm -hmm. to, to, to really be gentle. You can easily get that with materials like sponge, uh, that you can you know, uh, create expressions, but with marionettes it's a bit hard. But I think, like I said, when you spend more time with your puppet, you create that bond, uh, they can surprise you. They can, they can really uh, uh, give you sometimes movements or emotions that you would be, you would be surprised. So I think when, when, when uh, as puppeteers or, 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 or artists, you try to go beyond what you, even your, you know, what, what you've already put down and, and try to just continue growing and evolving, uh, that's the key to, to really uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, having a better storytelling outcome. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And let's give uh, Fidelis and Crispin <laughs> our thanks. this maneuver 
and hope I don't mess up the tech. So back to you all. Is there anything you wanted to say about your show? Um, ah, what happened? That um, we didn't get to yet. Uh, well, it's um, so the, the, it's a very uh, also specific uh, situation uh, for us. This happens uh, also a lot, a lot with this show that we are here with. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kabat, uh, that we are operating materials and puppets, mostly puppets, uh, constructed by Michael, who's sitting uh, over over there, and it's uh, always a kind of uh, very interesting uh, approach that we make mm -hmm. when we are introduced to a, a puppet that was constructed by someone else. Yeah, that you first need to. Uh, figure out uh, what was the story behind that, what is, the, what is the idea, what is the place of the puppet, how can it be uh, moved, and most important, what kind of your own story you can tell through that, uh, th uh, through that means of, ex of expression. So uh, that's... Uh, in a way, I think it's uh, it's totally different uh, for a puppet constructor who makes mm -hmm. can make things from scratch. And I have also a little bit of experience li li uh, like this. And it's a totally different process, of course, mm -hmm. because you think of something, you have your uh, fantasies, then it uh, appears. Usually, it looks different than in your fantasies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then. And, uh, and in the, uh, on the other hand, you have a process where you get something and you see and, and you have to make fantasies on the top of that what you have in your hands uh, already. Both processes are very interesting for me. Yeah. And then to find how it can really work in this particular piece. Mm -hmm. like. Uh, you have puppet, and then you would. M for me, it was uh, also with uh, in Krabat. It was um, very important to to have this puppets, materials, but also uh, um, music. It was. It's by. It's the Charlotte Wilde is sitting here. She is. She is doing the the live music, and it's uh, during the rehearsals. It was also very important how the music came to this piece and how we uh, could um, make it together uh, mat materials puppets uh, act actors like us not only animators but also actors with the music with uh, with the songs and so that was the trip uh, for me mm -hmm. also very important good yeah. Could you say a little bit more about your collaboration with Michael in that mm -hmm. does he just give you a puppet and then you build the show around that or do you ask him to build a puppet specifically for your show? Well, uh, I think we could go back in history <laughs> okay. uh, to 2002 where we first met when we were students mm -hmm. and, uh, and again, I told you about the education in Białystok that time. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you would have a couple of, uh, so to say, traditional and unconventional techniques and you would try to figure out what can you do with this hand puppet, with this marionette, with this rod puppet or, or something, uh, something else. And now these two guys appear there uh, for a workshop mm -hmm. uh, and they bring you uh, soil, mm -hmm. water <laughs> and plastic foil. Okay. And they say, okay, now we improvise for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> that changes the perspective, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So you start dealing, I mean, it's, it's kind of a, this kind of, uh, is there such a word holistic, uh, yeah? Mm -hmm. That you, you have the kind of a, um, a mystery and of everything uh, and it's very essential and it's there and you create a kind of a different world using this uh, three materials and yourselves um, and uh, and you use also the music that is uh, around there but this is the so this is the beginning of this collaboration okay the change of perspective is the beginning of this collabor uh, collaboration mm -hmm. and then for some reasons the energies that they brought and we had uh, somehow uh, got uh, together got along and uh, and there was this idea to 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 make a, a show the first show yeah and it, and it's till till today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it lasts okay so for you all it's the relationship the creative relationship that's important not the puppets per se the puppets come well, out of the relationship puppets are uh, something uh, i don't want to t talk <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, we'll we'll, any, we'll give Michael to, the mic. To, to, to anybody's <laughs> mouth, but mm -hmm. I have the feeling that maybe puppets are something different uh, uh, for me and something different for Michael because mm -hmm. uh, for me, the puppets are the mean of expression, and sometimes uh, I would need them mm -hmm. and sometimes not. Okay. Uh, so the puppet itself is not the. Uh, the point where I start thinking mm -hmm. about the uh, performance. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, some kind of a wider picture idea and then okay. and then things start uh, appearing and uh, maybe for some of you it's the different way of thinking about making a performance that there's the, this puppet and then what can you create around that mm -hmm. which is beautiful course as well. Great. Did you want to add, Dagmar? No? Okay, so the first question when we open the floor will be Michael, because we're going to give you the mic so that you can respond. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm going to move down to Federico now. Um, is there anything that you wanted to say about your show or your processes that you haven't had a chance to say yet? I, well, I don't know who have the opportunity to see the show. And there are different type of puppets and different techniques of puppets <coughs> in the show. Um, some of them are make specific for the show. Other ones, they got cast for the show. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you start to develop an idea, I start to work, and then I go and check in the room all the other things I have done and what could be that puppet that came coming to the show. Mm -hmm. So that's another um, casting process. That not everything is made specific for the show. They mm -hmm. come, depends. So using some of those other puppets, which is nice when you elbow to use them in something else and bring them back okay. alive. So that's part of uh, at the work in, in Son launch with Sonia. 
I'm not sure. No, I don't know what else to say. Mm -hmm. Well, right I, now. I, I have a follow on there then. Okay. Because this, this idea of casting a puppet instead of crafting it purpose built for the role, I do that because I have a whole agency with my, my figures. Uh, do you find that when you cast a puppet that you've already developed as a character in another show, is the puppet an actor that can become a different character or is the puppet a personality that plays itself in each show? Mm, the idea is to play a different character. Okay. And try to figure out, sometimes I even change the way the puppet is going to be manipulated, uh, right? So mm -hmm. I change completely the technique of the puppet, mm -hmm. which in Sonia, I don't know, maybe in the website is a picture of the nephews and the grandsons. They used to be a stream puppets and I just redesigned the way to manipulate them and bring them alive in a different way. So, yeah, I think the idea is that they play a different character, you know, completely. Recast as an actor, not as a puppet already, already made for something specific. Give it the chance for the puppet to be able to be some something else. Mm. Okay, I don't see. Th is that one of the nephews? No, no, that's <coughs> the grandson. <laughs> uh, that's the same technique. Ah, uh, is not. Might be another one. Okay, let's see if I can get No that. more. Oh, well, no. <coughs> no nephews. <laughs> wow, they didn't make it to the website. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> okay, oh. they need to talk to their well, agent well, I about need to that. Take, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, I'm going to have problems. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. Okay, thank you. So, um, this gives us actually a good bit of time to take questions from the audience, if I could have that microphone. Oh, okay, it goes over here to Michael in the green shirt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So what I'm asking about, what I'm asking about is um, the insight that Powell brought out about his perspective on your collaboration and that for him, it doesn't begin with the puppet, yes? But since you are the builder, is the process of developing the show more rooted in constructing the puppets or in some other phase of the development? I have to speak in into here, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so with the show, what we are, what we are here, it started. There's the impulse to do it with Krabat, with his story, and at the same time with people. And I start with puppets. I have to start always with puppets, mm -hmm. um, but. Uh, uh, when, when uh, there's a collaboration with, with other people or when people ask me to build a puppet for them, I, uh, I have to be 100% in love with these hmm. actors or puppeteers. But don't misunderstand me. It's, it, uh, I, it needs a very strong connection. If there's 1% missing, I tried that, mm -hmm. then th the result is not good. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's already in the building process. Uh, uh, it's it's on it's on the table. The the people who are will will play with this puppet or are connected with this puppet, okay. and I I don't make any sketches or anything. So it's, it's um, it is what it is. Then what comes out there? Mm -hmm. So um, so there's not an, an idea. It could be big like this or small like that. It's it is what it is. <laughs> um, and that's connected then to Pavel and Dasha. When we, when we did the show together, we did the, 
Salome thing together, and there was also only one puppet, really one puppet in, I think. I remember. And that was connected to this group and to these people from the beginning on. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's more the opposite when it doesn't work. Hmm. When I'm not, when this connection, if it's a city theater, just uh, can you build some puppets from, for us? And I said, yes, <laughs> because I like the director a little bit, yeah. <laughs> then uh, uh, the result is not, maybe other people don't see it, but for me, I see there's something missing. Hmm. <laughs> I also can't sell the puppets. Oh. I only rent them then. I, I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that's yeah. interesting too. So, um, do they ever receive the puppets, start to rehearse, and say, oh no, this is not working? Can you adjust this or that? And that's on both sides. So I don't remember yeah, the situation it's ra like that. It's I, I would okay. say it's rather the situation where we say everything is perfect and ah. Michel is not very not happy. happy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that must mean that he's an excellent builder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so he keeps on uh, making things better and better mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in terms of that. When you are in the, uh, when you are rehearsal, in the rehearsals and you have this puppet or this material, you can just check it and you have time to michelle is always there with in his workshop also and it's before the the, the rehearsal you you are i'm absolutely sure that he is there <laughs> and he's looking on the things and uh, checking and we sometimes yeah it's whole process so mm -hmm. uh, and it can change during the the rehearsals and even after yeah. Okay. During the performances, yes, if you are s not satisfied with something and mm -hmm. you have the idea to make something better. Okay, that's but great. It, but it also can be the other way around that I build something very quickly and uh, Dasha or Pavel take, take this puppet in Kukulka. We had some okay. of these puppets what also traveled to Chicago and was suspended to perform, <laughs> but we didn't find the time now. Uh, but maybe tonight. There's oh. a puppet, a huge puppet, <laughs> and I just feel that it's it's half good, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but and and Pavel took it and uh, improvised a beautiful scene with that, and uh, that's that's it. So it only only came mm -hmm. to together by your playing with it. Mm -hmm. Actually, we both play with it in this uh, in this <laughs> scene, but from a different so. perspective. Yeah, mm -hmm. so because yes. the energy match is very important. Okay in this constellation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So B Blair returned just in time to be the mic runner. Yes. <laughs> okay. And so um, there's a, a, a lady right back here where you were sitting who has Hi. a question. Um, I think someone had mentioned with the puppet over time and build it more and more real like in, in your imagination familiar with that character creative and how us and not care so much about the show rules around the show and instead you let the character um, from your fantasy become in a real entire quote unquote maybe maybe I can add yeah. so um, I think that ventriloquists develop a very close relationship with their figures and um, over time, those characters become very whole persons to them. But I'm not sure if puppeteers form the same kind of relationship with certain puppets. Is that what you're That's getting to? I, 
Well, no, I, I'm very close to the puppets. I, I have a very big relation and very clear connection with each of the puppets they place on the show. The wire puppet is is really m the character that I talk to all the time and is myself, and he have many secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's transparent. Even though he's transparent. Very close to to the puppet that we develop, and, and when we play with things, mm -hmm. we get very connected to them. Yeah. Yeah, but it also has something to do with this kind of uh, uh, trust and faith that some things uh, that are done by puppets are way better than done by humans. If, for example, our common friend Florian Faisal made a very nice show once, uh, which was called Pupa, Puppen Sterben Besser, which is uh, Puppet Die Better. Oh. Uh, and, uh, and the conclusion of a couple of scenes there were that, uh, in a matter of fact, when the puppet is dead, is dead. <laughs> uh, like, really literally and uh, actor we don't need to move on stage for people to believe that we are alive because i'm a live person even though i'm not moving now and puppets live only through the movement actually you know and uh, and from my perspective this kind of those little things that build a kind of a trust that we are different and we do different things better. Mm. That, uh, that builds a kind of a bond and a kind of a trust. Mm. So I, I never, I mean, I've heard about many wonderful artists who would sleep with their puppets and to create a kind of a bond. Well, I never heard that. <laughs> that. <laughs> Um, and I don't feel I, I, I need that, but, uh, uh, but seeing that, like with this mentioned Kukuka puppet that uh, was roughly done by Michel and it's not finished till uh, today, but once I got it in my hands and I saw this person talking to me, I went like, oh, what the what the hell? I mean, <laughs> I have somebody sitting on my lap and talking to me. <laughs> it's just those things that uh, that happen between you and Puppet. I don't know if it's got something to do with a trust or a bond or just coincidence or energies. I don't have any idea, mm -hmm. to be honest, how it, uh, how it happens. But it just happens. I think we grow up playing with things and giving life to things mm -hmm. since we kids. So I think it's an exercise that we been developed since we are babies. Mm -hmm. So, so it's believing need to take something, yeah. call, play, mm -hmm. make a life. So, yeah. Yeah. so it's a relation that we grow up mm -hmm. you know, with the object and giving life to an object mm -hmm. and, and take care of the object. When you say about death, Yesterday, the, uh, um, my choice about dying with dignity. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, the main character, Sonia, yesterday someone asked us why we didn't show the moment that, that when she's gonna die. Because basically what we do is she walk out to her death. Mm -hmm. And didn't make sense to try to one of the reasons was mm -hmm. to put the puppet to die in front of everyone mm -hmm. when we've been trying is the puppet to be alive mm -hmm. to tell this story. And we know in the moment we drop it, it's going to be dead, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? Which is what you just said. Yeah. So yesterday we was uh, answering the, que the question and yeah, that's, that's the reality. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the puppet needs to walk away to let you know it's dying mm -hmm. because 
is decorating her. Yes. It's not life. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so uh, that connection is, yeah. 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 And this brings me now to this image. Uh, somebody told me about a Buto dancer master mm -hmm. who made the death scene like perfectly. Step by step, his face would become dead. And all the people sitting on, in the, on the audience would go like... And now I can imagine the puppet audience watching that, saying, yeah, what, what is the big, what's the big deal? Everyone can do that. Huh? So it's a matter of perspective. <laughs> Thank you. So, do we have, I hope, yes, more questions. We do, we do some kind of show in the, in the spring, and, and we've always just made up our own stuff. You know, if we, we try to reason out how could we make an articulated hand. But I'm thinking, you know, more I'm sitting here thinking, there must be some manufactured hands out there that already have all the mechanisms built into them to be able to pull the strings and do that kind of thing. So is there a great resource place to find this kind of technical knowledge? And, and how much do you use of that pre-built world? You know, in, in Poland, actually, in Polish language, you can find, like, maybe one book that gives you a kind of a knowledge about the uh, uh, puppet building techniques. Like, literally one. And I talked recently to my f um, new friend, uh, Rafał Budnik, who is an absolute... Uh, master in, the, in making uh, uh, building. building puppets. And he said that his idea is now to sit down and work on putting his knowledge and all his skills to ri write down a book because there's really, it's really needed because there's not much of it. So yeah, so I don't know how, how is it in, other languages. Uh. I think I know the book you're referring to. It begins with, the author begins with an F. It's like a holy grail book that puppeteers try to find and it's extremely expensive. Anybody in the house can feed me the name so I can. Um, yes. <laughs> This is a website uh, de mm -hmm. devoted to um, preserving this book and the mechanisms. The PDF, the PDF of this book used to be on screen. I don't know if it's still there, but definitely something that is worth the subscription if you can get on the mm -hmm. Okay, so up ah, here we have it on Amazon. Uh, you can get it for five hundred dollars. Okay. So, did that satisfy your question, sir? Okay. Yes. Oh yes. Okay. Um, yeah, this book. I have this book, <laughs> Figures in the Fourth Dimension. Yes. Okay. Um, back to materials. I'm definitely in my trash collection phase, where I feel like I just collect and never throw away anything. So I was wondering if throughout your careers there was a very surprising or exciting found object or recycled material that through discovery you found made a really good puppet. I think we are thinking about the same <laughs> thing. Uh, Murdas. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. 
that's, that's also that was something. The <laughs> that, that was the beginning of our career, and we were working on this uh, on uh, on this performance I mentioned about the King Gnaw, Król Murdas <laughs> in Polish, and we had a very little support, uh, I think, from Visegrad Foundation because it was made with uh, artists from from. Um, Slovakia and, uh, and Czech Republic and Poland and we uh, uh, in order to bring all these materials that uh, were connected with electricity we went to each and every um, construction place and uh, you know buildings that were renovated in our uh, in Białystok and we would ask, do you have anything uh, that you would throw so away, any cables, any stuff like that? So that was the trashy period of our career. <laughs> yeah, that we would collect things uh, that were really, uh, that found their way on, on stage eventually. So the, um, we needed a lot of that. So we kept on collecting, 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 and that, that was all used, yeah. Okay. Great. Yes, Federico? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pick things that they, that they look, that they have future, but then you get a, to a place where you have too many things <laughs> and nothing is happening. <laughs> <laughs> you have to clean it again <laughs> and then start. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's... The, the, the way the, the brain works on how is seeing things and then seeing, okay, I can do this, but that can allow me to get to this. So, yeah, the, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a habit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know what? I have a friend who's a composer, and uh, not in terms of materials, but he has a lot of uh, songs and music written somewhere. Uh, that he collects there and his other friend when we would work on one piece would say oh this is the recycled piece that you are <laughs> using <laughs> another <laughs> using another recycled another piece <laughs> I know this one <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> great thank you okay yes Tim Wonderful panel, thank you so much. Uh, and the Cravat people, I just want to say, your piece is not in my top 20 list of the greatest pieces of theater I've ever seen in my life. So thank you so much. It, I saw it last night and it's absolutely magnificent. Um, and, to, and so to that point, I have two questions for you about not the puppets actually, but two of the other materials that we haven't really talked about yet today. One was that amazing sequence when you had those very long, Things. I don't know what they were, and I'm, I wonder what they were made out of. And you were kind of doing this and creating these incredible oscillating waves of energy that were happening. What was that material? Uh, and then did you have to explore with length? I'm curious about did you have to like uh, experiment with how long they were to create that effect? And then we haven't talked about the flower in the piece. Mm -hmm. And what was the process of that like? Um, I mean, the, the, the way, all of the different ways you, in which flower was used, I, I imagine in rehearsals, I mean, flower you get on the, it can be very slippery and very dangerous. So um, and how did you navigate that and negotiate that? First of all, there's no flower in the piece. Oh, what is it? It's haze. Is the Creolan fancy powder on our faces? But it's also, uh, it's also baby. On, uh, a baby powder. And what did you use, Stefan? And uh, there's a new material. Yes, I use special US material now and to perform here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying a lot with the, with the thing that comes out of the real mill. And so I also usually try to buy stuff that is from the area and combine it with stuff we bring. So um, to create a local effect. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the local thing that you bought here? It is called cornmeal. Cornmeal. <laughs> Yes, but the thing, stick. I think that it's also connected very much with Florian. Yes, I think so, the sticks. 
he is not with us now. Florian Faisal. Yeah, I know but what they are made of, but I only know the the Polish name of mm -hmm. it. Uh, it's a kind of a glass, I think. What? Fiberglass. Fiberglass. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And they are extremely. Um, they are flexible and very strong, strong so at the same time. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and did you have to like uh, experiment with how long the, in order to get that effect? Like how did that? I don't remember yeah. this. That's the maximum you can get. So that. we get the maximum, uh, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> then it was thinking how to take it into the car. I hope, <laughs> I think so, because it's always yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. But this size was just right. The movement, we recognize that it's moving so beautifully. And yeah. Great. Thank you. Next question. I've got a question, actually. That's OK. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, <clears throat> the, um, you, you've talked about that the, the fabrication, both of your teams are, uh, are working with uh, building the puppets and then getting into the rehearsal after the puppets have been fabricated. I, am I correct about that, or did I miss it? Monsieur that no, sometimes things are in the process yeah, yeah that you use only half of the puppet <laughs> it, 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 and it gets back to a little bit what Paulette was asking earlier about it, to just so, sort of understanding the uh, the how fabrication uh, uh, leads the the vision of the work by by arriving at its limitations that then dictate the the show it's it's it, and in in a way that's uh, that's hopefully it's strength right and so um uh you, on the other night uh federico you mentioned that originally and sonia was very tall a giant puppet right and so the understanding of th that change but and so um but that that came from working but it, so there's this there's this always this tension between the person who makes the puppet and how they're establishing the the this primary thing on the stage and then the conception of the idea and the story and the narrative and the performance and all these other theat these practices making that exchange back and forth so un so I, what my question has to do with when so that you've made Michael, you're in your studio and you make your crazy puppet and then you bring it into the rehearsal hall. It, d when is there a kind of a realization that, uh, that oh, we can, we can now actually do a different construction technique so that the puppet can advance this other way that we didn't even understand we needed to do? Uh, do you understand this uh, question? If I understood right, so my answer would be it's a matter of any expectations that you have uh, toward the puppets or you are checking the possibilities. From one side, I mean, uh, when it happens to me or us that we construct the puppet, which is not often, <laughs> we have the expectations, yeah? And then, and then it's either there during the rehearsal process or you change the concept of the scene or of the of the show to adjust to the possibilities of the puppets right and on the other hand when you get the ready made puppet like made by michael for example that's the first thing you don't have expectations i don't have expectations i'm checking the possibilities first and what can it do and how I am able to uh, to control it and uh, usually when uh, in in Krabat it was like uh, I wouldn't even notice the um, that th there are the changes all the time in this that and uh, and that because it was it was Michel's fantasies that probably it wouldn't work the way he uh, he wanted yeah but uh, if there's a particular uh, expectation, like with the Turandot puppet, that it needs to be heavy and need to, it needs to uh, be hanged at one point and operated in a very uh, specific way, then we would adjust and change the mechanisms uh, uh, and 
due to to fulfill this this kind of expectations i don't know if it would be the the answer to your question but it's also different in Krabat because Michel is also on the stage. He is also animating the puppets, so it's the the best um, yeah situation because he is building the puppets and he also uh, can check them together with us on the stage mm -hmm. and decided Great. to change something or yes. leave it. Okay, we have a question down front from Jackie. Thank you. Federico, as you know, I saw your piece at La Mama and I saw it last night. And each time it grows even more beautifully. Uh, curious, did you, when you were creating the, sh the smaller version of Sonia, did you use a rehearsal puppet? One, and two, I'm very curious, um, because I used like a lot of non-toxic things, how did you put her together? And you said you used wire. Where was the wire? And how did you string it through the body? And through, was it through, did you cut the joints and put it through? And how, how was that all done? <laughs> oh, okay. So the, the first, no, I, I didn't rehearse we have the big <coughs> puppet. We did that workshop with that big Sonia. And then Denise, we collaborate together. We start seeing how the text was growing and the story was growing. And we start to understand that that huge puppet is going to create too many problems. And that we need to make a big Sonia, but not that big. Uh, I was like, yeah, have to make another puppet. <laughs> That's a hard work to do and take time, but was very important <coughs> to focus. So first I built the puppet before we went to rehearsal for the second part of the process of launch with Sonia. So basically the puppet was ready and I bring the two to rehearsal. The the way it's connected it is actually it's one piece of I, I never cut one block. It's one block, and I never block. cut completely mm -hmm. in pieces. The, uh, still, the foam is still connected <laughs> in every place. Wow. So I just make cuts, and then I, I make the layer of the skin mm -hmm. with the stockings. And stockings? It's, it's stockings? Uh, yeah. The ones that you Yeah, pin holes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And so I just start sewing it and make it. Uh, like the pieces together and then I saw many layers of the stockings goes together connecting one piece to the other piece but the inside is the foam is still together and then when the knee problem is start to happen <laughs> honestly I just took a long steel pipe and I ah. put it through the leg in both sides and then I connect it in the center to help to support the weight when mm -hmm. she's walking and, and to the bone. The bone. <laughs> yeah, like a bone. <laughs> that was the way. Okay. It's, it's, it's very new for me what I did. So all the time is learning how to, I'm, I'm, I'm making new things, trying to fix it, trying to figure out how to. You create that technique. Uh, yeah, I just, have to make an op a new puppet. I have this piece of foam <laughs> that was very hard on my bed. And I, I say, well, okay, it's time to change the bed and <laughs> make a puppet. <laughs> and uh, so I took it and I start to draw on top of it and cut it. And really was my first time I do something like that. And then when I have the whole body, I start thinking how I break it in a way that it's going to be able to move. And because everything that I do is sewing, mm -hmm. so that's what came out. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's another question <coughs> up front here. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So it, it, it strikes me that, like the gentleman here asked about, you know, is there something that, that's a, a book or, or a resource you can go to how to construct a hand and, and, and whether it exists or it doesn't exist. 
But there's something that's very exciting about creating something always in the moment. So it's saying, this is, this, this is what I'm trying to solve, or this is what I'm trying to create. And what are the possibilities to do that? And the way that you did it may be very different from the way someone else would do it, right? But it comes out of how am I experiencing the puppet? How am I, what do I want it to be able to do? And what's my imagination, right? And, and is that, you know, one can say, is it a limitation? Right, because maybe if I could go to a source and say, to do this, you do that, yeah. right? But would you be losing something by that? Because there's, there's things that get created out of, because it came out of my imagination and my situation and what I was trying to create and actually having a source that was a go-to source limits the possibilities because it becomes a dependency mm -hmm. rather than just letting everyone's experience drive the experience and drive the, the creativity. And, and that is really exciting I to hear. Challenge. That, that challenge is yeah. what makes you do things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what keeps me making puppets. My, I, I just try <coughs> to figure out how the bird is going to fly. So I'm just looking at birds flying and trying to figure out how I can make this bird and how many pieces I cut it how I connect it. And that exercise helped me to develop the scenes too. Probably because I'm coming from the dance. So I play with my body and try to understand that movement with my body. And then I start to make <coughs> the puppet based on how I feel that movement should portray it on the stage. So I, I love that. I mean, and sometimes it gets too complicated and maybe you call some friend, hey, how you do that? <laughs> <laughs> but I like the, the challenge of, of creating a system that is comfortable for you and, and make it happen. I think it's a nice process of building. Great, thank you. We have more time. Do we have more questions? Yes, William. Uh, hello, um, this is also a question um, for, um, uh, for you. Um, with the, the images that were shown as you were talking about Sonia and the larger version uh, versus the smaller version, not only did the size change, but also the entire style that Sonia was depicted in. Uh, and, and yes, the, the, the way that the, the size of the puppet is going to affect how people experience a performance with them, but also a move to a more realistic, realistic style is going to open up a possibility, more possibility for the audience to connect with the puppet on a personal level. And I was just wondering what the thought process was of not only do we have to make her smaller, but we have to change her style completely. Yeah, that was part of the conversation. <laughs> uh, besides that she was too big, mm. when we start to develop this story, we start to realize we have a different relations with her, the actor and the puppet. Mm. and. Even the w we feel that she had to be bigger because she was bigger than us in the way she beside her death mm -hmm. and the way she explained to us. So we see her as a bigger figure. Mm -hmm. So we want to keep that proportion. Mm -hmm. But giving, trying to create a puppet that is going to give a more a human mm -hmm. connection to be able to tell the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was a very important point uh, for Denise to convince me to make another puppet yeah. <laughs> was we have to found a way that the character can connect with the audience and the audience see the character as a human being there even though it's bigger but it's, but it's not that big mm -hmm. because it's always going to create something so to break that wall but that was very important thank you okay. Someone else? Oh, yes. Go ahead. <coughs> oh, wait. No, there was. OK. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I noticed for a lot of uh, these performances, there's like uh, a mix of like puppets and actors. And um, uh, like, of course, physically, uh, who the actor is like interacting with is the puppet. Uh, but I wondered, especially in these performances where the puppeteer is visible alongside the puppet, if it feels like as an actor, 
you're collaborating and interacting with uh, more the puppet itself as another actor or like you're collaborating with the the puppeteer like playing the puppet that's a good question so in Rabat we have this situation that we are uh, like ac actors of the yeah we are also puppeteers in my head in my head I feel that I, that me is also the I'm also the uh, the the person the 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 um, Postage, uh, character. character from Krabat, I can change because of puppets and materials. I can change to uh, my, my myself to the uh, yeah person like to character uh, taking from uh, Krabat story. But I also feel that I'm the the the, the character. So it's mixed and it's uh, it's floating somehow. I don't uh, in my head it's not uh, borders mm -hmm. between s these mm -hmm. two things. It's uh, they are living together, and uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, and for me it works both ways. So uh, obviously every puppeteer starts moving the puppet. So it could be alive, but the puppet influences the puppeteer as well. The way uh, the, the the puppet needs to uh, talk, yeah. You adjust your voice to the movement of a puppet, and so it works both ways, I think. And on the other hand, it what is very interesting for me each time I see a puppet show and I see a puppeteer ha uh, uh, operating puppet, I, there's always two stories that I, that I see. The story of the character, the puppet, and the story of the, uh, of the puppeteer. Yeah? And uh, even if I watch the performance where the puppeteers are invisible, only you, you can see only the puppets, I can get out of my head this thinking what's <laughs> happening behind the uh, behind the screen uh, screen and how it influences uh, what i see yesterday we saw an exhibition in the field museum with our kids uh, in this uh, this china uh, puppet uh, uh, shadow puppet uh, show a digital ex uh, exhibition you can see it from both sides mm -hmm. yeah the screen you you see what audience would, would see and you go on the other side of the screen and you see the backstage. <laughs> so even if I'm there to see the show and I only see the screen, I always think about this, the, the story of the, of the puppets here. So in, in my head, it's something that is very connected. Yes, and uh, the, I think puppet, puppet theater is something more like, I'm from little city in Poland and uh, yeah, I never been in the puppet puppet theater uh, before. It was when I was adult. I I find out that puppetry can really give you more. So uh, my first time was uh, I don't know. I went to Bielsko Biała. It's a huge international uh, festival, and then in Poland. And then I watched a lot of really great. Uh, puppet uh, theater shows. Uh, it was also Charlotte and Michelle there. <laughs> so it was my first meeting with them also. And, and my head was like, uh, yeah, I opened my head because I thought before that something like that not exist. And, and uh, puppet, puppet theater show me that you can, uh, you can make things really more um, that it's so open and you can choose, you can mix the things. It's uh, not only one way of thinking. Uh, yeah. And for me, it's just the, the, yeah, the best. 
I feel the same way, like that, that relation. But one thing is funny, like when I'm, I'm working with dancers and actors, and when you casting and trying to get the, the, the right person to work with you, immediately the, the person, you give the puppet, you know if it's gonna be a good relation or not. Mm -hmm. Because you see the actor, he wants to act, and the puppet goes down, <laughs> and uh, he's acting for you. Oh, the dancer is like a, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. He's dancing, <laughs> or she's dancing, right? And it's not a connection. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's incredible how fast you can say, oh, this is the right person to work with, or it's a, someone that really that doesn't have that connection. And uh, I think that comes very natural. So in, in the casting processes, like, uh, oh, that one is perfect, or like uh, you feel someone they have that possibility to be give life to something and share life with something. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Great. So Jackie's been waiting for a bit. Um, two things. Crobat. Am I saying it correctly? That was the little puppet. The little. I was sitting right in the front. So at a point, it almost looked like it came. A, he came to life, okay? And I think it was Rafi, I'm not sure what you use for the hair, but the hair work, because I work with hair and puppets and just puppets in general, but uh, the hair on those, you had a bunch of puppets, everybody had two puppets in their hand, you know, it was just amazing for me. And this also, for Federico, with lunch with Sonia, to me, how important is it that these puppets have spirits? Because you, your puppet really came to life. It was like at a point, it looked like it was just moving, you know, and I know that somebody, there was a, someone was pulling it, but it just had a life in its own. And Sonia, she came to life also. So the spiritual aspect of the puppetry, I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> About that. <laughs> I'm very happy that that happens, that people feel it, because it's something that you don't know if you're doing it, it's just happened to you, so that means it's happening. So it's nothing that we can really control. It's something that when you manage to make it happen, it happens. And yeah, and I, I, I think uh, that theater, is something that uh, is really that happens in the viewer's head. Only a little bit of theater happens on stage. This is only the impulse <laughs> and the spiritual aspects. They appear in the head or hearts or souls of the viewers. So we are only we go on stage in order to give the kind, this kind of impulse for <laughs> the spiritual things mm -hmm. that can happen there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's a really, oh, one more. Was that a, a question you had back there? Yeah, okay, sure. we'll bring you the mic. You get the last word. <laughs> no, it's okay, we're out of No, okay, okay. Okay, so my question had to do with, um, I guess it's a theme, um, creativity and the possibilities for it, but um, with the uh, with technology being incorporated, a part of the process and um, thinking of what's not maybe possible now, but could be. So the question would be, since different emotions that can come out, sadness, mad, or mourning, and they different. I wonder, is it possible to get to a general same idea of what sad, mad, or mourning, or will it always be different because that's the beauty in sometimes this part of um, do some of the stuff that you do now? 
directing and maximizing their creativity. You know, I wonder if the only way to show and program something to be sad and you put in a be sad and then and then it like shows the puppet to be sad, but maybe it's not possible because you know what one thing's the display of sadness, you know, could be very different from another, so that's not possible. Or is it possible? Okay. I wish to keep it live theater. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good for you. Well, I'm, for some reason, I'm pretty calm about that. So uh, I don't think that uh, artificial intelligence or any other technology uh, can, could replace live theater any time. Uh, the thing is that you have to be, you have to have the consciousness as an artist and uh, uh, Artificial intelligence uh, can can learn, can have a, a very, can be very knowledgeable, but the consciousness is not there. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and the the thing is that that's the thing about going to the theater that it each and every show is different, right? And you you cannot program the audience to receive the uh, impulses that you're sending every time the same. So, and that's the beauty of the thing that we are uh, three hours to the show and we, are, we don't really know what is going to happen <laughs> today because yesterday was yesterday. Uh, you say uh, yesterday was nice, but we are uh, afraid each time that today is not going to be nice. <laughs> And uh, that's also an impulse for us to uh, to be creative each t each time and do it new. And I think that theater is also to m for meeting people. You you want to meet people. And pandemic time, uh, when we were closed at our house, it was hard time for us because we did some things. We performed somehow. Uh, uh, it was streamed, but mm -hmm. without people, it's, it's just set mm -hmm. somehow. So I think that uh, that's the main thing, to okay. meet. Yes, to yeah. meet people. That's a wonderful ending for the Ellen Van Volkenberg Public Symposium Series. <laughs>